been, what did you do on Snapchat? Yeah. Oh, you have a Snapchat? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's dope. I love it. Yeah, I'm getting little BTS clips for me. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. How, how, I'm, I'm, I'm super curious, like, do you take you that? You just, sh- um, like, to get videos, Broski. You want vertical, right? Yeah, yeah, vertical, all vertical. How important is, like, that sort of other, like, social media stuff to you? I mean. Because you don't need, obviously you don't need social media money. Yeah, for sure. But I just, I feel like now it's important because it's a whole new lane to, like, promoting music. Yeah. Like, showing people your personality. I feel like now that's a more important part than it ever been in music right now. Do you think it's because it's because of social media or just because people want to know more about people that they're, like, listening to or with? Because of social media and social media personalities. There's, like, a lot of artists that become social media personalities that they looking for the introvert dudes to be like that, too. I mean, some some artists, though, that's, like, stay off the Internet, like, it worked to their advantage, too. Yeah. Like, some artists it's who rare, stay though. mysterious. It's yeah, mysterious. like, I feel like The weekend is someone that you just never see do anything mm-hmm. other than music. Yeah. But, like, do you do you think that that's, I mean, I guess for someone like that, you get to a certain level, it's sustainable. But as far as, like, being an artist now, I feel like you have to. Because, like, for example, 6 9 right? Like, he was probably one of the first artists that, like, really turned being a musician into, like, as much people either hate him or love him, right? Into, like, popularity on the Internet. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has so much mm-hmm. popularity, like, because he's like such a character. Yeah, I feel like even if you if you one of them people that don't like engage in the internet a lot, you gotta have like uh, like what am I trying to say? Like a, a specific image, like for everybody, like a certain aesthetic you fall into for everybody to be like, I right, well, this is his thing, you know? Yeah, I feel like Cardi has that. Like, this just never shows for up. For sure. And, which. <laughs> He Which, got that on lock right now. Like, do you think it was by accident? Or you think it was on purpose? Uh, I think that it was. I think, like, I know personally as an artist, you just end up finding yourself and finding your niche or how you want to approach music or how you want people to view you. I think that's that's what happened for him. Because if you see and hear some of his earlier music, and I'm quite sure, er, like, his earlier. F- his fans who been fans with him since the beginning to say the same thing like he was like totally different and did a 360 almost like you know so he was he was more out there before yeah like you know like more social yeah a different like he went about dressing a little different and he switched his whole thing up and it worked for him like work for him. what do you what do you what are you on like what do you focus on as far as that like image wise because i feel like a lot of rappers are kind of like they don't really talk so much about their personal life they don't really talk about like who they are really as people outside of the music except for like when i, I guess i'm thinking like kanye west because he talks about everything yeah. like me I, I just really be myself i try to make sure that people know me for my music it's a lot of lot like i'm the type of person that want to keep my personal life private because I want people to just, I want my music to be good enough to where it's like, I know this is the main and only reason everybody rocking with me, not because who I'm dating, not because yeah. the drama I'm in, not because what I got going on at home, but just really my music, you know. I don't see any drama on you. No yeah. drama. I'll be, I'll be keeping my nose clean, <laughs> man. <laughs> I wonder if, like, so, so, but to that point, though, do you think it's important for people to know, like, who you really are? Because when I think, I think about you and I look at your music, not that on some weird, when I say I think about you, it sounds funny. <laughs> um, but when I think about what I know of you, yeah. there's not much of, like, who you really are, though. And, like, when I hear a lot of your music, like, a lot of it is, is heartfelt. Yeah. A lot of it is heartfelt, like, For from sure. the heart, right? So my question that I'm super curious about you is like, where where is that coming from? Like, have you ever been been like heartbroken? You know, for like, sure. I feel like I feel like us as people, we all go through a lot of. Shit, but I'm just more so in tune with the the emotional side of it, as far as like expressing those type of feelings and understanding that everybody going through the same thing. Yeah. What have, what have you personally been through that's like trying, really trying for you? Because I've, I've looked and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. <laughs> it's just like really relationships. 
And, yeah. Uh, so the, the 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 like when was your first heartbreak? Cause you're what you say you're 24, 25, 25. Yeah. I say my first my first real heartbreak. I was I was I was probably a senior. Yeah. A senior in high school. Yeah, that was, was my but, first. But heartbreak. was it is it like how'd it go? Cause like my first heartbreak, I remember really vividly. I remember like trying to fight so hard to get this person to be like, no, I'm good enough. Like this should work. And I remember being in a position where like I'm on my on the phone crying to my mom, like all kinds of crazy. Yeah. And it just wasn't supposed to work. I mean, it was young. It was just like I was so attached to it working that I tried everything. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I literally like I was a trainer, which is so funny because your trainer's here, which, you know, shout out to him because he, you know, brought you to the gym and that's how we met. Mm -hmm. um, but I was a trainer. And I remember I was training all these other like model chicks at the time because mm -hmm. I was like on my grind as a trainer was before the internet. And she was like, yo, yeah, you're, you're sleeping with these other girls that you're training. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was like removing all my clients. I was literally like losing my clients to try and make this person believe that I love them so much. And even though it was never about that, right? Mm -hmm. So I lost all my clients. I remember my last client was a, was a gay dude in Hollywood. And she's like, you're sleeping with your gay client. I was like, what the f are you? Like it was the craziest and I was like, I was so shot after that relationship where I was yeah. like, women, f everything I'm going to, I'm going to build business. All I'm going to do is focus on this. Yeah. So for you in high school, was it like, was it like bullshit puppy love or were you serious or? No, I was pretty, I'm like, I, 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 I you feel me? I, I love hard, like, especially when I open up to somebody though. So like, it was, that was the first real like heart wound I say that I ever got like, and with something to do with love, because normally it's like I'm like nonchalant, but that was like the first relationship where I feel like somebody really had that advantage over me. Yeah. Almost, so. What'd you learn from it? I can't really pinpoint it. I'll just say, like I learned what to look for, like what red flags for sure. Yeah. I learned, I learned some red flags. What are the biggest but, red flags you think when, when trying to find a girl? I know you got a, I don't know if you talk about this. You have a girl now. Yeah. You talk about it. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying like, um, I'm trying to think though, like what's like, what's a good red flag? Though? Or it's a bad red flag rather. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. a bad red flag. Probably if she like has a bunch of uh, Instagram circles with like, you know, different countries and it's probably a big red flag. Why you say that? <laughs> you know when the girls, you know when the girls like they're they're all over the world and they have all these like circles. And oh, it's like, right. I get she, what you're saying like, like who's paying like, for these trips? Yeah, no, that's that's for sure, for sure, for sure. For real. That's an like, easy one for me. Yeah, but on a personal tip, like on a personal level, like what what did you learn from it? About maybe just about yourself, because like I, obviously you said oh, you yeah, I heart. could say like just like just putting yourself first for sure. Like, or just, yeah, that, that's that's all I could really say. Like, putting yourself first. Like, never really seeing yourself too much in the image of being with somebody. Like, being able to stand alone, you know? Yeah. And being being able to be okay with that. Like, because, like, you know, when you're young, you feel like it's the end of the world if you oh my losing God, yeah. the person that you <laughs> with. Being able to be solo, being able to be like good as yourself. Yeah, cause like, like, like I got a son right now. He five, and that's something I want to make sure that he know that you don't have to have a girlfriend when you're sixteen, yeah, and seventeen or even twenty one. Like, just live your life, and even if you is with that person, just keep in mind that you can be alone. You know. Yeah, it's crazy how much we get caught up in in other people, just for just for like love or security or anything. Yeah. Like, because I've definitely been there at multiple points in my life. And, I, you know, at this point, obviously, like, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I want kids. But I've definitely struggled for a lot, a lot of my life with the balance of, like, work, and relationships, and all this kind of shit is in, in regards to it making content and, like, being able to have enough time. Do you do you struggle with that sort of stuff in your life with music and, like, your personal relationships or even family relationships? You say, do I struggle with, like? Like, the time, like, the balance of it all. Yeah, sometimes for sure. I feel like uh, I just gotta like really make sure I'm mindful of balancing that though, because sometimes I feel like guilt 
for for not setting us setting aside enough enough time for my kid. I know like I'm primarily working for him though, but yeah. But like I still got to like make sure that I make that look. And it it could be like, like simple simple stuff like going to the park with him or just kicking it with him in the crib and not going out to the studio that night. Like look that add up though cuz kids will never forget that. Yeah. It's funny how like it's well, I just had I just had banks on earlier but like how like the small things is kind of like what life's really about though. Mm-hmm. Cuz I'm curious your perspective before you had money obviously. I don't know at, at what age did that change for you when you went from like no money to money? What age was that? I was 19. Fuck, that's so <laughs> so young. Congrats by the way. <laughs> Thank you. But like prior to that and having what you have now like Hasn't it has it given you perspective on like what really matters? Say it again. Has 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 not because in most cases when people don't have money, right? They everyone thinks that's what matters is having money, and mm-hmm. having things, and obviously like there's a certain base level of like having to pay for bills or having to pay for rent, and everyone's like working on that, and that's very essential. But at some point, like when that's all taken care of, like what really matters? Because at this point in your life, you obviously have great successes. You've done really well financially. You're you're great. And now having it, like, hasn't it, has it given you a different perspective on what really matters? For sure, for sure. Because at first, you know, and and one and and one thing my my pops always taught me like that like if you is a if you was a depressed person without money, you would be that same person with it. Like it don't change. It's more so like you having to do internal work. And I and I know and I've been really focused on like making sure my mental is in the right place because you can have all the money and material things in the world, but if you're not like really aligned with yourself spiritually and mentally, you would be going crazy up in that damn mansion. <laughs> yeah. But what do you what do you do? What do you do specifically that helps you create that like finding that sort of balance? Like, do you meditate? Like, what are the things you actually do? It's just because because it's not just because someone told you, right? Like, you yeah. have to actually practice it. Yeah, no. Sometimes I just be listening to the um, the like certain frequency vibration things. Yeah, like on like the, sound um, bath type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I do that. I sometimes I listen to those while saying while saying my positive affirmations. I not drink or just like indulge in a party and type stuff. Sometimes, like I do, I I take a lot of different approaches and especially like even some like working out you know like like that helped my mental a lot you take that serious yeah, you see you like sure. i've seen you at the gym so many times now like you really do it yeah what 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 has that changed in your life besides being jacked like getting more make me feel a lot more confident because i was I got to a point where i started to feel insecure about my size because you know like i'm grown a grown man, and I was like 130 pounds. Yeah, and like the seeing the progress really helped me build my confidence back up, like physically, you know. But it's funny though, because like people on the outside would look in, like, what would there be to be self conscious of? Because like you got money, you have popularity, like it's it's just it was just, it's just a personal thing. Like still yeah. to this day, I could walk past the mirror and like, nah, I gotta get yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> You're a gym bro at heart. <laughs> I love that. But the crazy thing about being a gym bro, like, it's almost never enough then. Because yeah. you, have you got to that point yet where it's like, you know, there's certain days when you just look a little bit better or, and it makes you kind of maybe feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's almost like in this space, like, like I know for me and a lot of people who are, like, really into the gym, it almost becomes like it's never enough. No, I'm, I'm for sure in that phase right now. Do you have more, like, physical goals that you want to, like, go after? Yeah, because, like, right now I'm 180 pounds, and my goal is to be, like, at max 215. But yeah. I'll, I really want to, like, keep progressing to see because I don't want to be too big. I think it'll kind of, like, hurt my rap image a little bit. Like, Your image, yeah. Yeah. Why, though? Just be more jacked? Yeah, I'm saying, like, if I get too big, <laughs> I feel like, that's how I think about it, though. Oh, man, I don't know. I feel like it's, like... I don't know. Nowadays, I think obviously, like if you look like a bodybuilder, people might be like, "What the f- is this weird?" <laughs> but like, I don't know. I feel like you could get bigger. You definitely got bigger since I've seen you start yeah. for sure. Yeah. Which is which is crazy. Um, what do you like least about the gym, and what do you like most about the gym? 
Start with least, yeah. Least, the only thing I can say that I know, that I don't like about the gym sometimes is like whenever it's crowded. Yeah. Like yeah. I I really prefer like being in a gym where it's like a small amount of people in there. But is it is it because people try to talk to you? If, was that why, or is it just like even if they're not, it's just you like it less crowded? Yeah, that's that's just how that's just the like like the way I like to be in it. And I, Cause people coming up to me, I don't really mind that. Like that don't really bother me. But yeah. when the gym just too packed, sometimes it's just like crazy. Cause there's certain gyms we, that I go to, we waiting in the line to get on the, get on the machine. I'm like, nah, I gotta leave from here. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, so do you do anything else outside of the gym that's, that you've noticed has like really improved your life? Like, do you do any, like you said you do the affirmations, which was, which is dope. Mm -hmm. Cause I had no idea about that. And I think a lot of people think that's like, that's kind of hippie shit, Yeah, but that, that helps you a lot. No, yeah. it helped me. I've, I've been doing that since before I got into the position that I'm in. So like. Before you had all the success. Yeah, and that's what made me keep on going with it now. Like, because I seen the type of differences it made. What started you on that then? I ain't going to lie. I'm just, I don't know if, like, some just be in my mind telling me to do certain shit. Like, nobody ever coached me and came and told me to do it. Like, I learned that it was an actual thing after I had already been practicing it. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You're talking about the manifestation part of it. Yeah. Because, like, uh, it was a point of time, like, uh, I was, like, in and out of the county. Like, I was going to jail a lot for, like, little petty. And one time when I had got locked up, like, when I was, like, I was buying paper off commissary, paper and pens. And I just start writing a bunch of shit down that I wanted to do and goals that I set for myself and rapping in. I kept the paper for a long time. I can't find that damn paper, but like every single thing that I wrote down, Bro, like literally insane. everything that I wrote down, I ended up doing. And like I didn't even notice it till I'm like in the midst of doing some of this. Shit. Like I'm going on tour, hitting certain cities, breaking certain milestones. I'm like, damn, everything that was on that paper, I did it. What do you think is the power? Because, dude, that's so crazy. I, I literally talked about this on my pod before, but I, I wrote down when I was a kid. I think I was like, I must have been six or seven or some shit. And I wrote down, like, I want to have a house with a pool and I want two pit bulls and, like, all this crazy shit. And I have literally all of it. Sure. Obviously, it's a lot long, like, a lot longer time ago. Yeah. But, like, you know, it doesn't just happen, right? Do you think it's just because you put this down, you wrote this plan down, like that's why it happened? Or like, did you did you ever go back and read it? Or was it yeah. like... I went back to read it for sure, but I, it's that's what I'm saying. Like when I started, like looking into manifestation, affirmation, stuff like that, they, they like, it's a lot of power in writing things down and like being able to visualize it yeah. and going back to it, looking at it, it's like a lot of power that helped the stuff. Everything that you write down coming to... Fruition. Yeah. So is that the only thing you've done that has helped you get to where you are? Because most people have these questions, right? Besides, like, obviously being a great musician, being able to write the music, being able to produce the music. But, like, what else do you think really makes you you? You know it's, what I'm saying? It's, it's definitely, it's definitely um, like, investing in yourself, of course, but, like, I, I, I was, like, investing down to my last dime. Like, any type of money that I got, any type of money that I made, I put it all into what I was trying to do. And, like, really blocking out the noise. Like, it was a lot of people telling me, like, what the f*** are you doing? You crazy. Sit your ass down. <laughs> all this other stuff. But I just kept on continuing on with what I felt like was right. Yeah. So where, where so when when was that stuff happening? How old were you? I was like 18, 19. And also when were you in you said you were you were in jail, I'm assuming at certain times? This all in the same time period. Yeah. yeah. Cuz I I didn't really start rapping like the first time I ever went to the studio I was 17. So from 17 all the way up until I got signed when I was 19. Okay. I signed my record deal. And between and between 17 and 19, that's when all of that was going on. What what did you go to jail for? 
I was going to jail for like selling drugs. Uh, I got into like like a high speed chase before. <laughs> 17, 18? Yeah. <laughs> it was like a lot of different. And, and where I'm from, though, this is petty shit, though. Like, yeah. this ain't no serious crimes, right. though. So, like, for, to me, it was just, like, lessons, though. Like, damn, I'm studying these situations that could have been worse. I need to be learning something. Yeah. And that's what was making me look at it differently. Yeah. Speaking of crimes, what do you think about all the stuff that's going on with Diddy right now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd ask you that. I'd ask, like you're in the industry. Well, maybe okay. Don't maybe you don't speak on Diddy directly. Fair, but do you have any sort of um, relationship with like kind of like the shadiness of the industry? Like what you mean by that? Like like have you ever been in a situation where someone was like, "Yo, bro, you got to do this," and you're like, "That's fuck." Not like not sexually. Not talking about that at all. Mm -hmm. Just like in the industry, have you ever been in a position where you're like, "This," it just felt weird or like someone wants you to do something that you're not comfortable doing and i'm not speaking sexually at all i'm just saying like maybe like write a song about this and you're like well, you know what i'm saying like has, do you ever have is there ever influence like that in the industry no i i personally never experienced that but i feel like because just like the way i'm coming a lot of people wouldn't need you know like a lot of people around me just be scared to say a, i wouldn't say scared i don't know but like wouldn't come to me with a lot of shit just because the way I carry myself or like the disposition I have, and uh, and I stay away from people a lot, like or like out of the limelight. Like I be trying to pop out a little bit more just to show my face, you know. But like a lot of times I don't even be around or in certain settings where where I could be put in that type of yeah position. I see. Is 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 being in industry at all? Like have you have you been like I don't know, like, have you ever felt, like, burnt out being in the music space? For sure, for sure. Yeah, I feel like... Like, because what happened recently with, with your the, the Hood Poet was supposed to release and it didn't release? Yeah. Well, I well, end up... That was because you went through some shit, right? Yeah, I end up going through some, um, like, a little situation, you know, and um, that just caused me to push it push my album back. I, I I actually too, like I just wasn't feeling like the time was right no more. Like with everything that I had going on, I wanted it to be like a smooth rollout, like something that I was used to with me dropping three albums prior to that. And, and a deluxe was damn near like a fourth album. No, so I just wanted to s still like have that type of smooth transition, like from moment to moment with my rollout. And I feel like that it up so that's what, what, what actually mean. happened because it was stuff and stuff in miami right no it wasn't a, really a situation in, in, in miami it was like uh some some shit that was supposed to like some that was allegedly going on with uh with my with my younger brother but all that it shit, had nothing to do with you like, yeah all that shit was all that because they loved it the blogs love like pop that shit out and be like look at this yeah you know, that's just how this go, though, when you're in this type of position. Because I, I didn't even really, like, expect for certain to go the way that it did with, like, being inside of my community, you know? Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Like, certain people within my community, like, filming and stuff like that. Got you know? it. Like, I would have... Expect a motherfucker out a little more respect for me, but so so so. But well, then it's like so so. I'm assuming that's what happened. Is someone in your circle did something they probably shouldn't have done. Yeah, I don't I don't want to keep on. That's fair. That's fair. Fair. It. Yeah, all good. Um, so when stuff like that happens, do is it like uh is it like some PR sh where you have to like try to get people to like take down like. Cause you know how you know how like all the 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 rappers whatever people people now go to like streamers and they make content and then everything just kind of gets like picked apart and you because like you have never really had anything that was like oh this is this is a problem or this is an issue for the most part like no drama I guess stuff like that I guess the question I'm leading towards is um, as far as like your team goes have you have you tried to like make that tighter since then or have you been like you know what I'm saying I always keep my like pretty 
like wrapped up, I say, or like it ain't really a situation that I gotta go clean up. Or, yeah, I get you. Or like next time this might not happen because for the most part, like like we were saying earlier, like I don't really be in. Yeah. And I stay clear a lot of shit like that, so it ain't really nothing. I could just continue on like the moving the way I've been moving. Yeah. So the hood poet thing, that's coming out in August then, right? Now? That's what it's planned for? Yeah, that's what it's slated for maybe sooner. Sooner, yeah. Maybe. Um, which, by the way, before we started, I, I, I mentioned something about a crazy stat, and I was looking this up. I didn't even know this was real, but you apparently are the only rapper in history that has like three albums that all like 10 songs on each album are either platinum or gold. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, do you, like that's, <laughs> does that ever trip you out? Cause like, we're not, I'm talking about like Drake, Lil Wayne, all these people. Mm -hmm. You're the only one who has that stat. Yeah. Which is nuts. Cause that means those songs got played to a crazy degree. Yeah. Does it ever like, I don't know. Do you ever just, does it ever like your ego? Cause nah. that's like billions of, plays no, i wouldn't say it like i don't know i just never get wrapped up into my ego though like some a lot of time i don't really i wouldn't really brag on this or say it's a good thing but like a lot of times i forget who i am like in a way like as far as like my status where i'm not so like wrapped up in my head that oh i'm polo g this rapper that did because like i know outside of the accolades like it's like just me being me or doing me and living on this specific island where it's like the people who rock with me or mess with me are interested in what I got going on. So I don't walk around and, or like walk around like everybody's supposed to care. Though. Yeah. So it's just like harder for me to just look at it like the wrong way, uh, yeah. I guess. It's a crazy accomplishment, though. Yeah, no, I, I definitely appreciate it because I'm so passionate about my music, though. It's definitely a testament to how far I came. And yeah. Like, yeah. Sometimes it just appreciating it though that make you want to cry. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm kind of getting at. Like, do you? Because I can look back on my career and I've been doing this for so long. Obviously, I'm not a rapper. I don't have millions of listens like you do. I'm in a different way. And I spent so much time like just building that like I didn't spend a lot of time sometimes like stopping and being like, wow, this is so amazing. Like I'm so grateful. Yeah. And obviously, I'm very grateful. But I can look back on my life and go like damn, I could have slowed down more and been like, this is so great. Not that I'm great, but this the fact that I was able to even be here, even like have these conversations, even people like you who talk to you, like that's a, that's a greatness in my life that I'm grateful for, right? So it's like, do you spend time and slow down and like really look at that? Because I didn't do it till I was like 30. And I was like, damn, I wish I did this more. Because I felt like it, almost, it also propelled me to want to be greater. Yeah, no, I'm learning to do it more like, with certain moments or situations, just always like giving thanks or showing gratitude for the position that I'm in. So, like I have my moments though, but it's definitely something that I've been on myself like more about, like just sitting back and just appreciating all of the blessings that's going on in my life right now. Yeah. What 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 do you think in your life creates the most uh, anxiousness? <laughs> Um, have you ever struggled with like anxiety and things like that? Yeah, I, 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 I always, damn, they always got anxiety, but about what? I don't know. It's just sometimes it's just like I just feel it, and, and I'm not really the like I'm. I was saying early on, like I'm not really that much of a social person. So a lot of times, like I can be in my head about social interactions or just. Something as simple as saying what's up to somebody. Yeah. That like I know them, but I don't yeah. know. Like I be before the walk up, I'll be thinking in my head, like, should I say it now or time in or it's funny because I, I that's so real because I've I've just the experience that I've had with you, like that I know you. Mm -hmm. It's like I could tell. You have like that that and I have the same I'm super awkward. Sometimes I don't like I'm afraid to approach people. Yeah. Even in like my own spaces. But is it is it like, where do you think that comes from for you? Because of, like, the... You think it's because people look at you a certain way or because they're expecting things from you or... No, it ain't that. It's just I've been that way for so long that back then I didn't really have to think about it because, every like, so much people, so many people wouldn't give a f 
But now I feel like I'm in a position where I so I guess it's kind of is like that. But I get, now I'm in a position where more like more people do know me or so I'm just connecting with so many mu- s- 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 with a lot of more people. Yeah. That. So is it a pressure thing? Yeah, a little bit. But but just like period, just like having eyes on me, having to make contact with people, talking to people a lot of times that give me a lot of anxiety or just knowing that I'm being seen. Yeah. I get you. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to think like where where along the lines would I deal with that the most? When I like I don't know. Do you do you ever besides music? In your in your in your personal life, do you ever think that like you're doing the wrong thing? Have you ever felt like you're doing something wrong? Like, are you hard on yourself? For sure, yeah. Or like, yeah, I I, I feel like I, sometimes I could feel like I'm doing the wrong thing as far as like time management. Like, I be on myself heavy about that, or just like getting distracted, like. Oh, I've been on my phone for X amount of hours just scrolling and going from <laughs> app to app. And I'm like, damn, I could have been doing so much other shit. Like, I beat myself up about it all. Like, I've been to the stew this whole week, but I only made this many songs and I could have made more if I just cut out a little l- more of the chatter or cut out a little bit more of the, like, just f- around. I be always on myself about shit like that. Yeah. The Hood Poet thing, um, the album that's coming out, uh, is there going to be different music? Like, are you going to bring something new? Because, you know, a lot of times, like, people expect, like, you know, the Drake shit, Like, yo, they always want the same old Drake. Mm-hmm. Are you doing anything that's, like, like left field? Because you did this song, <laughs> what is it called? Um, on something hard? Something? Heartbroken. Heartbroken. You did yeah. the song Heartbroken. With Diplo. With Diplo and the Jesse girl. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm curious because, like, that, like, why do you, obviously, like, I get it, the marketing of it, right? Or like getting into new genres, but like, have you noticed? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Do you? I don't know if you even look at your analytics or whatever. But has that expanded your audience? Because it was like a super kind of like country vibe. I don't know. I didn't really look into my analytics or like to see like w- what real differences it made, but. Cause I always curious, like when artists do when they do like the crossover stuff. Like I know Beyonce's. I feel like she's doing like a whole coming soon, like a whole uh, country sort of yeah. vibe. Yeah. Um, and like, do you see yourself? Basically, what I'm asking, really, in, in regards to your album, is like, are you gonna make like new sounds on it? Like, do you try to push yourself to make new sounds, or do you kind of like stay away from it because people go like, oh, old polo, I want the old polo, you know? Somewhat, I feel like I play with some new sounds. Like here and there, but for the most part, it's like this, this album is more so fixated on connecting with my roots, the music that I started out doing. Cause my my last project prior to this, that's when I was like trying like left field things, or that I wouldn't have did like naturally. Like I was like tr- kind of forcing myself to switch it up a little bit. But like this time, I'm just like doing me connecting to my roots. Really like going back to the heartfelt music or just speaking from the heart in general. Yeah, so so that that idea, right? Like how cause like I'm trying to imagine like as a content creator, obviously I'm not writing music, but a lot of times when I'm making content, I can think of back on like a lot of videos I've filmed in you know, in the fitness space or just a YouTube space and I'm like talking about things that are relevant to my life. And that's always when like those videos would hit because it was just very sincere and real. So for you, it's like if you don't keep going through sort of hardships, like how do you keep progressing the music, right? Because like you grew up in a way different way than your life is now. Yeah. So it's like how do you continue to push that, that uh, I guess that note forward or that envelope forward in regards to like real, if it's just different now? Yeah, it's, it take a lot of like reflecting, you know, and trying to find creative ways to s- still tell a story because like, even young, I, I done went through and witnessed a lot. So, like, I, I can tell stories for days. But it's, like, still, too, it's a different type of struggle, but it's still a struggle, though. Like, even though I, I'm, in a, I'm in a better position, though, I still 
like got certain struggles that come with my lifestyle now and I'm still going through different different things here and there that I can still talk about and like that people can relate to you know yeah what do, what do you think because I I guess the artists that that really sent out for me on this is like I think like Juice World is really good at just talking about like his daily life uh obviously in relationship to like drugs and drug abuse you know RIP but what do you think now you deal with the most it's like to your heart uh, obviously family stuff yeah. but are you do you, like what do you i guess i'm really kind of curious like what is really hard not that I'm, this is not at all me saying your life's not hard mm -hmm. right but what's what's most trying in your life like what's hardest in your life right now just really dealing with being a person that's in the like in the leading role position you know like taking care of everybody yeah. Answering the phone for everybody. Really like trying to weave out who using you, who not. Yeah. Cutting off certain friends, ending certain relationships. Like that aspect of it get real difficult. Like, like being a person with the money, that's that's definitely like a, a hard position to be in. Yeah. Cause yeah. You, you, up. So many, like, so so many people are willing to fuck up a relationship because of what you have. Yeah, that's real. That's a lot. It's a lot, man. I don't think people get that. I mean, and at your age, and at when you started for you, like nineteen, that's you're still growing just as a human, like mm -hmm. as a person, mm -hmm. and like learning how to deal with that, especially in regards to like whether it be like family members or close friends, like that definitely fucks you up. So I guess like how do you how do you and you know we talked earlier about red flags with like women but like how do you now spot red flags with like friends or family like are you like oh I, I you know I see this like because obviously for family it's like it's hard to cut that's way harder to cut off than you know some random person or a girl mm -hmm. so how do you deal with that sort of it's just like knowing trying to figure out what people hear that what they heard at because. Like, it's it's one thing to lean on me uh, when you need something and me looking out for you, but like m me paying attention to who too consistent and what conversations are we having outside of you asking me for something? Is this the only time that we speaking like that? Uh, make make me like, even family like I uh, like fall back off you if I feel like you just strictly using me. Yeah. So with the girl stuff, right? Because you got a girl. Like, how do you have you had the same girl for a while, or is it like yeah, for a while? Oh, so almost like three years now. Oh. Probably passed out. I don't know. She probably gonna get on my ass. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Shit, what did I do? <laughs> no, no, no. That's I mean, so much to think about. There's a lot of things, man. I, I, it's good though, obviously, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, how do you know that? Because I mean, I guess you wouldn't have had if it's three years. I mean, you would have had some time before that. Like, how do you know someone's there for you, for you, and not for like what you have? Like, how are you determining that now? I ain't gonna lie, this might sound crazy, but I don't really find a problem in somebody being wanting to be with me for what I have. It's if that's the only reason, though, because I know certain women look at looking for a man to be a provider for them. So, like. Naturally, I feel like a woman could look at you and be like, oh, yeah, he's going to be able to take I care of I think that's reasonable. Yeah, but yeah. it's like when you can see like her intentions ain't pure with you, like she probably using you to not only get your money, some just some extra little fame or clout. Yeah. And she just only trying to, and you know, like her heart ain't in the right place. That's when it's like, no, nah, I probably got to fall back off her. Yeah. How could you tell, though? She'd be like, put me in an IG photo. <laughs> yeah, no. The girls who too quick to post a picture with you, I probably just met you three months ago. <laughs> and that's a, that's a that's one of them red flags. That's a big right one. There. Yeah. The, the, the circles of Mykonos and <laughs> post me on your. It's crazy, man. The world's so crazy nowadays. Like this, not getting back to the Diddy thing, but like this, the world is like, do you ever get on like Twitter and like look at what other people are saying? Not about you, just about like 
politics and life, and I'm, I'm not going to make this a pol political talk at all, but mm -hmm. have you ever been concerned with like where the world's at or you just don't, do you not put yourself in it? Because like it's a crazy place now. Yeah. No, I'll be seeing a lot of, I try not to like indulge in it too much. Like definitely don't beef with 50 Cent, right? Like that's probably a problem. You see what 50 posts? Crazy. <laughs> no, 50 be on, he be, he be on that. I know whoever beefing with him hate 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 every day of their life because <laughs> he's the owner. But like so so in regards to like the world, is it does it ever just like I don't know? Because you have kids, do you ever get concerned with like their future? I guess because it's it's just a weird time, man. Like social media, technology, the way people are just constantly sort of at everyone else's neck. Like it's like always like some sort of whether it's a race thing or like a political disagreements it's like everyone is constantly i don't know trying to like make someone else wrong yeah, so they feel right for sure well, what was like do you think again? about like does that does that stuff ever like stress you or does it worry like you worry for your kids and stuff like that because i i just and i'm asking this question because i don't have kids yet i really do want to have kids mm -hmm. one of my concerns is like the world is so obviously i'm not saying this is an excuse for me to not have kids but that is one of my concerns, like leading into being a father. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Back then, I used to not want to have a kid because how crazy the world is. But I think, like, shit, I came out pretty decent and the world been. <laughs> yeah, it's been. My parents instilled the right, like, morals and principles in me. So that's all I try to think about, like, making sure you monitoring your child, what they watching or looking at on the internet. Because a lot of kids. Nowadays, they iPad heavy, yeah. and they'll just get lost in it. You got to make sure they on the right shit on there or yeah. just looking looking over what they watching. So you growing up, you, you had good direction from your parents? For sure. Yeah. For sure. There's still big parts of your life as far as, like, direction-wise? Yeah. Because it's not like your dad had gave you some game early on. Yeah. Like, I'm real close to my pops. I'm close to my mom. My, my, my mama, she, uh, she, she part of my management team, so... Yeah. Like I'm close with both of my parents, man. We grew up in like a household where we was all close. Like me, my me, me and my siblings, my parents. Like we was always together, you know. Yeah. How important was that? Do you think for you in growing up? Real, it, it, it was it was real important because it made me want the same thing, just just a little better, of course. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. But now, so again, this is something we talked about before we got on camera, but now everyone's like living with you. Yeah. You said it happened like slowly over time. Yeah. Who was, I wonder who was the first person who went to live with you? From your family. i say it was my pops. My pops, uh, he used to have his own crib and a shot. I, I was like one of the, like it was kind of more so on me, like telling him to just come out here with me. Yeah. Cause like I was, I my son was like a new, still like a newborn baby around the time. So I definitely felt like we needed that older yeah. person for guidance and right. help. You know, cause my, me and my my son parents we young. Yeah. You know, so I feel like I needed that extra help, and he just stuck around. You know. Was it? Did, were you ever like when having the kid, your first kid? Were you ever like, damn, I'm really not ready for this? No, I ain't never think that. It was afterwards. I'm. I, I learned that I was too young, but <laughs> I ain't that th 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 shit. When I you say too like, young, like because you're like, this is a lot of work, or I didn't know how much time it was gonna take. Like, I just feel like mentally I wasn't in the best place to be a of a, a parent so young, like. Like, I didn't even mature enough yet. Yeah, I was still a kid myself. Yeah. Damn. Bro. So what do you what do you enjoy the most outside of music right now? I like, like, like I said, I like Besides the, the gym. gym. Besides the gym. <laughs> I, I know like you like hoop. the gym. I like to play basketball from time to time. You're, you're, you're just super, like, mellow, low-key. Yeah. I don't know. I like. I definitely like cars. Shit, I don't even drive a lot. I just, I don't know. I just be buying, though. To be totally honest, I don't know. Like, yeah, for the most part, I just be chilling. If, if shit, if that's another thing, just chilling at, at home. No crystals and 
if Chris was in your house? You would hit be like me or what? No, nah, I need to get up on it though yeah, yeah, a yeah. little bit more because my sister she like he- heavily in tune like that. Yeah, yeah. She be te- she be teaching me like a lot of uh, spiritual sh- I learn or sh- like that. She she be putting me up on game Sp- on spirituality and shit. Yeah. Are you are you a religious guy? No. No. More spiritual. Yeah. What do you? Pr- how do you practice that? Like what does she? What does she teach you? She'll just be putting me. You know, like. I so say for instance, like she's like a solar eclipse is coming. You got yeah, okay, no, boom. No. Like say for instance, really? like the the eclipse coming. It's certain sh- you would probably do or a ritual you would probably do, and I'll probably be in the crib doing that shit with <laughs> just because I don't know. I feel like that should be real though. Yeah. Well, that kind of stuff. It's interesting because that sort of stuff is like super super old. Like meaning like people have done that. I think even before really religion or the invent of religion, like tribes and different cultures had like things that they followed in relationship to the star. So that's maybe why it probably feels like real because to to a real extent it is. Mm-hmm. Like it's something that people have followed for a very long time. Yeah. Um, have you noticed any stuff like that help you in your music? Or is it just because cause I'm like when when you're writing music, are you just like, sitting in a room like thinking about okay is it what someone else is gonna like to hear or is it like what i'm where i'm really at you know or is it a combination of the two i say a combination because really my earlier music and like and, and i could say i'm definitely getting back to that like the formula formula that i had in the beginning like in my earlier music like i'm gonna speak from the heart but then it's like certain lines that have come up in my head, and now I think like, yeah, my homie's gonna like this. And whenever it's like that, like I feel like my homie's gonna like it, the whole world end up liking it. Like I don't know why. Huh. I don't know. Maybe because of where we from, you know, and being like from the hood and shit, like we we heavily influenced like culture. So yeah. I feel like whatever they gonna like, the world gonna like most of the time. What 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 really influences you? Because obviously you're a part of the culture, yeah, right, and where you've come from and the music you've made. But what really heavily influences you? I try to find a lot of different like things to inspire me just through my day to day. I can I can't really tell. Like, do you, you listen like, to like different music? Like, do you listen to like random, right, like country or some? <laughs> like, do you listen to other genres and like? get inspired in ways yeah like sometimes though i could say though um when i be listening like some of the bigger artists is that that are just like pop back out for like a verse or a freestyle like like i could remember this time like j cole had dropped like whatever whichever was the last album that he dropped i listened to the full thing and then he dropped the the freestyle on uh, the 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 L.A. radio radio station. I can't remember. I don't went up there four times, but the L.A. radio station, and me just hearing him rapping how how good it was. I'm like, damn, I need to step my up a little bit. Though. Like <laughs> that's what's making me, or like I ah, see like this this um. But what this, is the thing that when you hear that right, you hear it? I'm sorry, I interrupted you, mm-hmm. but. You hear the J. Cole verse, is it the things he's saying or the way he says it? Which is the thing that, like, you go, damn, I, I like, I could be better. It's everything. I ain't gonna lie. He got fl- the flow, the, the the lyrics, the lyricism, everything. It's like, he, he really, he really, he really that. And listening to, cause I'm, I'm, I come up from a real hip hop background. Like, my household, we really, real hip hop fans. I listen to older artists, you know, like, and you can probably even hear that in my music. Like I take mu- I take rap a lot more serious than probably my peers do. Cause yeah. that's just how I was brought up. And I'm, I'm a big fan of the art as a whole. So yeah, like I think shit like that make me like, damn, this nigga flowing or this nigga going hard. It's J. Cole's in my opinion, probably one of the best rappers of yeah, all time. For sure. For so sure. what do you think about the big three? So you think about the beef going on? Drake, Kendrick. 
I feel like it's good. It's a great thing for hip hop right now. Yeah. A great thing. It's I always wonder if it's orchestrated. I don't know. I think it's I think it's, it's it's a natural thing. Like we all competitive people. I think it's bringing competitiveness back to the to the sport, to the like to the genre. Yeah. I feel like that's definitely something we needed though. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I think it's great. I mean, I just, you know, you see, like, I think uh, Drake's dad posted something about, like, oh, I'm dropping an album, so I'm going to start some beef with Drake to get some views. Do you think that's why people do it? I don't think so. I mean. Because, like, it's like Future already had him. He already, he's good. Like, he was going to drop regardless. Definitely not the this group of people that we talking, because they all out of this world. But yeah. it's definitely some people out there that I feel like probably use that as a tool for promotion and like that but them guys i think they just just elite at what they do and just being competitive about it i just always wonder how real it is because it's like damn they don't even need like it's all I, in my opinion i'm thinking like i'm just imagining drake calling future and being like yo future be like you okay with that he's like yeah whatever because <laughs> like, it's like they're both getting you know because i think that was that song is like massive the one with yeah. kendrick yeah because because it's because of the beef yeah my, but the song is hard, though. Hard, yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's a hard that song. Yeah. So, so it's funny because you never get in any beef. Or you, you should start beefing with Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why not, dude. I feel like it's time. Yeah. He's from Canada, dude. <laughs> Come on. It's like Canada. Come on. I just, I just, I don't know. I, in my head, I'm obviously not, right? But. I just always wonder because you're you're so in your lane. I always just wonder, like, man, is he ever gonna get into some drama, like with mm -hmm. some other artists? No, this is I'm, not for you. On, on some rap, though, I ain't gonna lie. Like, if it was more so, like, like who are you better than? <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I just think it's funny. Like, like on some rap, somebody ch challenged me. Ah, for sure, how to throw a shot back just for the love of the sport, though. Yeah. Like, you got to, though, just to show, like, whether or not you better. Yeah. On that, what do you think about people who, like, because nowadays it seems like a lot of people, I mean, rap got to a point where it was just, like, people are just making music on TikTok to make a sound. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. what do you think about that sort of style of, like, approaching the music? I, that's, I don't, I, I'm not really a fan of that. Like, I like the passion and the music. Yeah. I like real music. Do you ever get pressed by, like, labels to be like, yo, you got to make this so, sort of sound? No, not not for real. They just be wanting me to do my thing. Like, they just want me to be me. Yeah. yeah. I feel like there's some people, though, that's just like, I don't know. I don't know what, what year was it when, like, all these random rappers came out of like soundcloud and shit and just started sounding the same you know when that mumble started getting popular yeah what was your perspective on that because you're you definitely don't mumble mm -hmm. you like rap mm -hmm. so when that started coming out and, and rising up we, it's just like do you look at it and you're like this is shit, or do you understand the? it depends on the rapper because a lot of rappers like and nowadays there's so many sub genres to hip-hop or rap as like a lot of new sounds being created within the genre, man. And some of the shit is like really dope though, like, or like from a creative standpoint, like the shit like is different. Like it's something that you grow to like accept or like quit. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever think you're gonna do more like singing kind of shit? I feel like I dabble in that lane right now yeah, a yeah. lot, but definitely like, like full fledged, yeah. Cause I, I I done took vocal lessons a few times that I wanna start diving back into doing just 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 to get better all around. So I could have those type of records where I'm just like full fledged singing. Yeah. That seems so much harder. Yeah. Singing seems so much harder. For sure. Not that rap's easy, obviously I'm not a rapper, but singing is like you you either sound good or you don't kinda. Yeah. Um what's your what's your sort of direction in music like obviously you're still in it you're still releasing albums do, are you gonna release like a bunch more albums is it like uh do you have a bunch of songs that you haven't released like how does that work 
And are you and like where are you going with it all? Like, are you gonna stay making music, or and where do you see the evolution going? I like I made in these past three years. I done made so much, and not even to mention like in the prior years. But I done made so much music. Like I got enough to put out a lot of more albums. Like in the double digits for sure. But I don't I don't see myself rapping for so long. I mean, you never know, but like me personally, I I don't see myself rapping for that much longer. Yeah. yeah what that. sort of what sort of uh what sort of direction would you go in the music industry after that? Or I'd probably just like, be like a get the f out, I don't know. A label CEO or something. Yeah. Well I, I am already. I got my own record label, only dreams achieved. But I'm saying like really that's the only role I play type yeah. shit. I always wonder how that works though, because I'm like, in the music industry, it seems like I, I don't know if I saw. I mean, I've I've seen stuff about this before, but I've seen Snoop Dogg talk about like streaming and like the amount of money he actually made on these songs that like did billions and billions of views. I've always wondered like, do the labels obviously? Because I'm assuming when they sign you at 19, they like probably pay you a certain amount of money and you're gonna fulfill this like quota of albums or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I feel like they take so much from the artist. Yeah, some people be having up contracts. Some people got better ones. Some people got decent ones. How did you? How did you? Did you set yourself up for for victory in there, or you sure. like owning the masters and that kind of stuff? For sure. Did you know that? Like going into it, like I wonder who helped you with it. Uh, I, my lawyer, my 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 mama. She was keen. She, she was, knew. Uh, my mom was just a smart person, and she yeah. was this before. This before she was I even like put on pen and paper that Official she my manager. manager. Yeah, okay. So she was looking over a lot of my paperwork that was coming in from me taking these, this meeting, here and there. Because I feel like a lot of artists get like take taken advantage of essentially. And like you, you know, you I hear about like artists like Russ and stuff where they like it's all independent. Like if you went back, would you do it differently? Would you try to be completely independent? No. No. Because I needed to leave Chicago, I felt like. And and signing was a way to leave it. Yeah, because I feel like that's I would have been waiting on the type of money that I got like advanced to me. I see. Why and did you feel like you need to leave Chicago? Cause Chicago, man, it's just a place where you can the trouble would get you or you can get into trouble. But eventually it's going to get you, you feel like, right? No, because get you would mean the worst thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, so you feel like you felt like that would have been imminent for you. No, no, I wouldn't say that. No. I'll just say that it's just a bad, a bad place to like stay when you're trying to, when you're trying to elevate. Because Chicago, uh, like, we got the spotlight as far as people looking at us and seeing, like, oh, what's what's next, you know? But, yeah. like, actually being there, like, the opportunities are limited. Like, they don't really cater. As many rappers that have came out of there, they don't really cater to rap music. And it's not that many studios or record labels and people that you can go and talk to and meet. It's like you got to leave and venture off to really make real connections that's going to benefit you. So that's like a place like L.A.? Yeah, like L.A. definitely. I feel like L.A. definitely helped me be in the, the best position possible as far as like music, networking, locking in with producers, just running into people at times. Yeah. Who, who do you still really want to make music with? You can do another song with TJ? That shit went so crazy first time. Yeah, I got locked back in with TJ. But I don't I can't really I don't really know no artists because like I the, I got songs with damn near everybody. Yeah. Everybody damn near every person that rap. So you just go do you go just different different genres now or what? I was just I'm always just curious about like the evolution of like You've released so many songs, like, because I think of it in relationship to content. I'm like, I've done so, like fitness, for example, I've done every sort of like bench press, whatever the fuck, teach this. And then it gets to a point where it's like, I can't keep doing this. Yeah, for me, like where artists is more like, 
if I make a song that I feel like, like I wouldn't force a feature. Yeah. Like if I made a song that I feel like that they a fit on, then I reach out. But outside of that, like a person that had to reach out to me. So it's really like whether it come to me or not. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder like, is, is there sort of like a hierarchy of like people not wanting to work with other people because of where they're at, like music wise or like uh, popularity wise? Because I always wonder why certain people don't come together. Yeah, some I could I definitely I feel like some 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 artists do feel like they too big to connect with like artists on the rise, but that could even work into your benefit because they can keep you relevant in a space that you ain't really known. Like everybody got their own audience. Audience demographic that they yeah. got following them. So like, like right now, say it could be an artist from like Oklahoma, just, just like weird, some weird. This, this, this new hot rapper from Oklahoma, and he killing it right now. And like, I got a fan base. I got a fan base in Oklahoma. But if I directly go and link up with him and connect with him, then that can just blow blow me up more in that place in the in the, in, the, in the cities next to it. You know, like. Like that count, and, and it, like somebody like even Drake, I feel like he understand that. Oh yeah, he understand oh, yeah. that. And he, I feel like he's always the one to like find these new people, do a, yeah. do a single with them, yeah. sign them, blow up. I mean, that guy's a mastermind, man. Yeah. <sighs> but I don't think I don't think he's I don't know if he's gone to Diddy parties or not. You, the Diddy's <laughs> parties? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, I know, no, I'm always no, just no. curious. I'm just so <laughs> curious about that industry dude <laughs> it's so crazy right now does it okay well don't talk directly about it but do you ever look at it like what the f is going on i don't look that's so crazy man i was i just like yeah maybe if you showed up you know it could have got like a different to one of the parties i wouldn't yo what <laughs> I don't even know no parties. I don't know the address, no nothing. Well, okay, what's your perspective on on like I guess the world now thinking like, oh, if you go think people go to these parties, it's like a certain like I don't know, dude, like a group. It's like Illuminati type. Some of that shit is just being blown out of like some of that shit ain't that deep, man. People yeah. some people is really so it's parties happening where my drink listen to music and go to your ass home. Yeah. Like, some of that shit is just being dragged in the media. Yeah. And like, you know, people from an outside perspective just be like, just doing too much with the shit sometimes. Yeah. It's de there's definitely, there's definitely an aspect of that for sure. Yeah. For sure. And it's like people love, they just, I don't know, people are so, I've talked about this on a few pods, people are so like a, Attached to negativity on things like they want to see the negative in this shit. day and age more than ever. Like, yeah, that's this is actually crazy how negative the world is right now, especially like places like Twitter, like that. Like, oh, bro, people thrive off just saying some negative cloud or laughs, or like this could be some shit that they don't even wholeheartedly believe, but they know it's gonna get a lot of attention. And yeah. That's why do you the, why do you think that is? Just because the nature of like trying to get views and trying to get attention. People, yeah, and people like up in the head. Like attention is like more important. Than, damn, they're more important than money these days. Like, yeah, I don't see in the comment section say thank you for all these likes. Like, why why are you saying thank you for some? It's not real. Like, I what, see what you're saying. Like, how's this? Like, what is this? <laughs> something to be happy about like, yeah that's weird that's weird it's like it's it's like it's almost like telling on yourself it's like you did this just for that yeah. not it was not that it had anything of real merit or like like sincerity you just do it because you knew you're gonna get a reaction yeah that's so f weird to me the internet right now for sure it's like very very blatant at this point so you i guess i guess in, in regards for you is like you just don't you just like disengage with all that you know like like, off like you the don't internet? yeah like you just don't engage. No, I be on the internet. I be on the internet. I'm on it enough to know how weird it is. So I'm definitely on there. 
But I just don't like. Yeah, I guess you would say like I don't engage in a negative way. Or, yeah. Like I try not to look into comment sections too much. But the type of artist I am, we're trying to connect to my fans. Like I try to. It's delicate, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I try to do it a little bit though, just to keep the connection between them. But like, you gotta really make sure you limit in that. It's like bad for your health mentally. Yeah. Why do you think people are so caught up in the negative? I don't know. It's really like, you know, like I think one of my theories is that, you know, back then when you seen uh, anybody of any type of importance, you only seen them like when it was time. Like you rarely or probably see these people just out and about. But now on social media, you seeing these people all the time, and it's like you only seeing their highlights. So now social media created a culture where everybody only going to show their highlights. Nobody going to go on social media and be like, oh, fucked up for me right now. Oh, I'm driving this beat up car or something. Like nobody going to say like that or yeah. during their grind. It's just more so like, oh, I'm doing good and all that. And, and that type of culture make people like hate on each other, hate each other, or hate themselves, like, for the predicament they in when we all going at our own pace. It's nothing to compare. I see. It's interesting. So you're saying it's like the idea that because it's the people mostly just show their best foot, they glorify what they're doing, there's not so much of the the bad in it all, like, for them, like, me being like, yo, like you said, I'm, I'm driving this fucked up car, or like, this didn't go the way I want it to go, because it was all so painted so perfectly that people are like, really vying like looking for the negative yeah you think. and then it's like one of them type of things where like right now say you was you was on a come up right now and during that process because that's so relatable everybody gonna be rooting for you but the minute and second you finally make it and now that's set in stone that's finna piss a bunch of people off where they gonna go from Go, go, go. Yeah, you doing your things. And man, that dude. Like, why the fuck is that real, though? I don't know. Well, like, I, don't, I really want to understand the science behind it, but it's definitely a thing to where when you get to the point where you need to be, so many people just going to hate you for that. Yeah. I think it just, it just has to come down to the fact that the people, they relate it to the struggle because they're in the struggle and they want the thing that that person's chasing. And because they don't have it, it's easier to say, oh, this person for all these things because they're not they're like more comfortable instead of looking at themselves and being like i should be doing these things because like as you watch the journey you're like oh like i can relate to these moments but then when it's there and they have it they're like man f that guy like he's got it i want it mm -hmm. it's more of like the selfish nature of it yeah for sure and this is a weird it's just weird the internet, i mean it's been like that forever it's just so crazy now i think because like all the different forms of success that you could have on the internet, whether it's like you're an artist or you're a content creator, or you have something in like a, a some sort of niche or audience. It's just so much easier for people to be like, to pick people apart. And like, I can't tell you how many people have seen me and been like, have said things about what I have, not knowing anything about my life at all or where I've actually come from and just making an assessment on where I am right now. Mm. And it's just like, what's the point of that? And I, and I, and I truly don't understand because all successful people I've ever talked to and I've talked to, billionaires tons of like just crazy levels of success mm -hmm. and those people who have the success are never doing those things that the people who don't have the success are doing like they're never being like oh that guy he has stuff that i don't have it they're more thinking like oh i'm gonna work harder to get that instead mm -hmm. of like let me tear this guy down because i don't have it yeah i just wonder where like i don't know i wish more people understood that you just yeah. don't get it I, I don't think or maybe they don't want to see it because it's easier to just look at oh that guy because I'm not where I want to be. Yeah. I feel like though it's it's so many many layers and so much out there that just brainwash people though. I don't I think I don't think it's just those people fault a hundred percent. I think it's so so much going on in this world to guy heads up mentally or just like brainwash us in a way or have us on the wrong because even even with the, sh the 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 that I know, I still feel like I'm I'm set back some for certain that I indulge in, or just even being on social media at times, like me 
living in that space too, even though I'm doing it in a different way. I feel like we all kind of in a trance. What sort of things are you talking to for yourself? Like, are you speaking to? What you mean? Like, you said there's certain things that you get caught up in. No, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, certain like uh, playing the net too much, being on the internet too much, uh, just being distracted with the wrong I say, or just looking at things the wrong way or looking at, I can look at some personal in a negative light that I'm not supposed to be. And I wouldn't be, I feel like I wouldn't be if I wasn't indulged in the wrong sometimes, you know? Yeah. Like being self-conscious about certain shit or like overthinking a lot of times when I shouldn't have to, you know? Yeah. Be you self-conscious because what you're reading comments about things, about people like on your music or stuff like that? Or is it like a personal thing? I don't get it. Like being just self-conscious about like the amount of work I'm putting in when I know I'm with myself every day. I know how much work I'm putting in, but like falling into the trap of feeling like I'm not where I need to be, you know, sometimes too, as far yeah. as like, uh, like, certain moments in my career that ain't happening for me right now. Cause it, no matter how far you get in your career, unless you like one of those, those top, top artists though, you gonna always feel like it's more to be done or more to accomplish. Yeah. You know? What do you feel like you haven't done that? Like, what do you, like, what are you speaking to directly? Is it like, there's not enough? Like, like I feel like I, I feel like I, I gotta just really still continue on with the success that I already had, and 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 making sure that that continue to happen though. And, and I feel like I haven't been as consistent as I usually would because I I just came from a cycle of dropping an album every nine months for the first three years of my career. Yeah. And now I haven't dropped the album in three years. Yeah. So that type of. I see. I see. Like, I I just be looking at you know. Is it is it because you just don't? Is it because you don't need to? Is it ever moments where you're just like I don't I don't need to or? No, never that. I I if I, if I could shit if I could have stayed on that same cycle uh, of dropping an album every nine months I would have. But because you know when you say like you have all this music right, uh -huh. how come it's not that simple just to drop the albums? Because it like like it could be some personal. That pop up okay. that derail me. Sometimes I'm not in the best place mentally to even talk to nobody. So as it be, it definitely would be hard to drop a song and just knowing that I'm gonna get all this attention. And sometimes it's just like going through the motions of being a rapper. You know, it's agreements that got to be worked out. Okay, you got to talk to your label, meetings with the label. This prolonging that thing, and it's like a lot of slow to happen yeah that's why i was asking you like if you could have done it without a label i wonder if like you know because like just not having someone tell like because for me it's like everything i make is just because i want to make it mm -hmm. and there's never any like no one's ever telling me don't do this or don't do that i just kind of like do it or i don't yeah so you never you never like i guess i guess i'm kind of curious do you think for artists coming up now it's better to sign a label or be independent i guess it depends on the circumstances yeah that's definitely what it is. It depends on the circumstance because everybody got a different situation. Like if you really want to change your living situation along with your family, some people might go and sign a deal. Some people is, some people in a good enough predicament financially where they don't have to rush to do that and they can get the mailbox money every month. I see. What do you What do you want to do? Like, because I noticed you got your guy for, I think is that Snapchat you said? Mm-hmm. Like, what other platforms do you really focus on? Because, like, you uh, have you ever considered, like, doing vlogs? I mean, that's not really you. It doesn't seem so much of your personality. But, like, would you ever do more social media content? No, I definitely thought about doing, like, vlogs and or coming out with a documentary. Or um, I even want to I even want to get into, like, streaming a, a little bit. Yeah, we were talking about that in a sec. Cause that, I feel like that's so. I'm really curious about this because obviously, you know Aiden Ross. Do you have an issue with Aiden Ross? No. No. Okay. That was like some internet, man. People well, what? Be making 
Uh, <laughs> what was it? It was like um, he was like pranking me, I guess, or trolling me, and uh, and like this was a while back. Yeah, I think like I was like one of the first situations that like like you know that everybody knew him from, you know, like our our personal interaction, and um, yeah, it was a situation where he was like pranking me, where like my. One of the producers I work with, Einer, it's, I think Z, Zius and them, Zius, they yeah, slid yeah. on me. And we was doing a video, and that's when the prank happened. And from there, like, people was making it more than what it really was. Because I f*** with Aiden, though. Like, yeah. cool. I just actually, like, was talking with him back and forth in the DM just recently. So, yeah. like, we cool. It was just, like, the internet being the internet. Yeah, Aiden's dope, man. Yeah. Really cool guy. He he definitely changed the space a little bit as far as streaming goes. And then Kai obviously is, he, I feel like Kai is like the guy for music right now on top of like on top of the fact that he's a big streamer. Mm -hmm. You know, because Aiden kind of started that wave of like artists and like streaming. Then Kai's kind of like taking it to a different level. Um I but I like I was saying earlier, I'm always I've always been really curious like why maybe maybe it's the exclusivity thing, the reason why rappers don't really do it, but like no one's really like tried to be a streamer. I'm not saying you got to go be a streamer or anything, but I just wonder how that would convert. Cause like clearly Aiden is a, is an amazing streamer and he knows, Oh, I can get these rappers or these artists on and, and Kai as well and have these viewership go crazy. Mm -hmm. I wonder if like a rapper was just like, that I'm just going to stream and see what happens. Like, I feel like, wouldn't it go crazy? Yeah. I, that's what make me want to like be one of those first artists that really try. I think, I think it's, it's some artists out there that dabble in it. And like, of like course, T Pain streams. He's not like those mainstream artists now, mm -hmm. but he's a big streamer. And I think he's made more money streaming than he made making music. Apparently, that's to yeah, his I ain't what he said. He stream. Yeah, he crushes. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, I wouldn't probably go at it like four. Yeah, five you couldn't be doing eight hours a day. Yeah, that's nah, insane. Hell no. Nah. But I, I don't know. Just some subtle that I feel like is cool enough for uh, like a rapper. You know. Yeah. I just feel like there's so much there's so much value in like the the streaming community, but it's also so f toxic. Like you said, something happened which probably wasn't that serious, and everyone just makes it something that it's kind of not. Yeah. But but like, do you see yourself doing more stuff like that? Like what? Like, like streaming? Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You gotta go link with Aiden. Do yeah. you should do a stream with Aiden? Yeah, I did one with him though, yeah. before. Recent though? No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, you that was that. like two years ago, I think. Yeah, you should do a new one, man. He's He's doing that like boxing and it's, his warehouse is super cool. Would you ever do any boxing stuff? <laughs> what, like would I have a box? Yeah. No, yeah. Like another that. artist. No, hell no. No. I, I don't I don't think that's on brand. Yeah. That's one of those things. I don't, I don't know. On brand why though? Just because like. I just don't really think it makes sense. Like that's how, that's not how I would want people to view me whether I'm winning or losing. I see. I ain't going to lie though. <laughs> Was offer me a hundred million dollars or so. You do it. I probably would get in that. I'll, I'll do it too. What the f in a second, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It really depends though. Cause no, nah, hell no. Nah, I can't advance me no million dollars and say go fight. I'm gonna be like, no, not a million. Nah. That's crazy. Hell no. Nah. So there is a number. Yeah, I, like I'm saying, if, if for a hundred, I'm for sure getting in that ring. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get in the ring with anyone for a hundred. I'm getting in that ring. Damn. What about me and you? Who wins in a street fight? In a street fight? In a street fight. Because it's on the street, it wouldn't be a fight if you were to stand. Ah, oh, <laughs> okay. Good answer. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. That's yeah. the answer I kind of expected. It's a good yeah. one. Yeah, because it's you know, it's, it's it is you know, it's everything or nothing. So I get that. I respect it. Respect, respect. I had to ask that because like my my Discord was like, ask him who wins in a street fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of a joke though. <laughs> but so you wouldn't. There's no like. I guess a hundred million would be the number. Who would you want a box? That's an artist. I want. Um, I ain't got look at me trying to start beef. I know. I know. I ain't gonna lie. The one one artist that I be seeing, he like nice with the hands. Those blue face. Yeah. I see nice. Uh, he spent a lot I of time. I seen Snap Dog too. You know Snap Dog. Mm. He a uh, artist from Detroit. I I think he pretty nice too. DDG f around with the boxing. Yeah. Brother. He be rapping it too. What? I ain't me personally. I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. not your thing. That's fair. So man, I listen. I appreciate you.
for coming. Sincerely, thank you. Yeah. And uh, dude, you, f-ing, I really like genuinely appreciate it because I know how busy you are, yeah. and I've f-ing asking you for I don't even know how long, but I, I really respect you coming out, man. Well, I appreciate um, you, and bro. thank you for your f-ing time, yeah. genuinely. Um, I look forward to seeing you more at the gym, working out, training. Is there is there like, I don't know. I guess on the gym tip because you're not, uh, t- like you're not in the fitness industry right Mm -hmm. but you're a rapper you're super busy what advice would you give to people who like want to be able to be consistent in the gym who always because like you know most people like yeah i want to do it i just this i just that like clearly you probably have this and that and all those other things in your life kind of keeping you away from it what made you and what advice would you give to someone who really wants to be consistent in the gym because you've done it because i've seen you literally change I say organizing your schedule more and stop making excuses though. I definitely say scale back off certain um like vices, I say. Yeah. Like you a heavy drinker and you part because it's hard going to the gym the next day after you done got super up, man. Yeah. So like scaling back off certain that don't really benefit you that much. Those are the only three things I say, though. Yeah, because it seems like you just, you know, you've not made excuses for it. Like, you've just kind of done it. Yeah. And it also seems like you kind of, you have to fall a little bit in love with it. Yeah, for sure. Otherwise, it's like, it'd be good just like, oh, I have to do this instead of I want to do it. Yeah. Not, not Nowadays, though, it's like more of a discipline thing. Like, me telling myself, like, no, go to the gym. Like, don't sit here and lay in the bed all day. Yeah. Do you have a hard time with eating? Sometimes I do. I have my phases where, I like, every second I'm hungry, but I know that's like really important, like towards growth, and that's the that's the only way that I really made progression in the gym, though, for real. Because at first, I used to eat like once or twice a day, and I wasn't really getting nowhere as far as my weight. But I hired a chef that come every day. I make sure I'm eating four to five times a day, and that's what's helping me grow. You know, so crazy. That's why we ended the podcast because I'm so goddamn hungry right now. I swear to God. I swear. But thank you, dude, for coming for real. I appreciate it. I really appreciate your time. And obviously, Hood Poets coming out. You don't know the exact dates yet? Not yet, but stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. How many many songs are on there? 18. Yeah, 18. I also, one more question. I'm curious. Does, Does the amount of, I don't know if it was who was talking about this at one point or I saw this, but does the amount of time on an album matter? It's actually, sometimes it's in your contract, like the album got to be this long, this many songs, minimum. Okay. But that really don't be mattering like yeah, that, yeah. for real. Like, I'm quite sure your fans wouldn't want a 30 minute, minute album, though. No, they'd be mad. I feel like, at this point, people would be mad. I feel like standard is like 45 minutes. Yeah. That seems like so much shit. Well, dude, respect, man. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Happy, happy to see you at the gym every once in a while. And if you ever need anything, I'm always here. Also, your boy, I told him. You guys could use that other space if you want to shoot content or just train and be out of the way. So you're always welcome, man. Appreciate Appreciate you coming, man, genuinely. Thank you.